Welcome to Free Play. Today we're looking at Action Hollywood. Ever wonder how close you can get to infringing copyright without getting rasped for it? A company called TCH asked that question back in 1995, and, and we never heard thing one from them again. You see, they tried to make a game that combined all your favorite movies in one game, and it went rather poorly. TCH also did a few other arcade games, notably a soccer game and a table tennis game, before falling off the face of the earth. With only one person doing the coding for them, I can scarcely blame the company for vanishing. So Action Hollywood features Guy Studley and his lady companion, Blondie McDumbsmile, going from world to world and flipping over blocks from one color to the other. That's it. Flip the blocks, make overt movie references, and get killed a whole lot. Travel four distinct levels to get murdered horribly. Now that may be a little unfair, because you do have the ability to hit the attacking creatures with a whip, sword, laser sword, or wooden stake, which doesn't actually beat them, sadly. Rather, they go flying like a cartoon character and slam into a wall, and get back up if you don't whack them again within a certain amount of time. And that's where the game starts to fall apart, because due to its nature as a quarter muncher, one hit kills you, and getting to range with them and hitting them fast enough is kind of taxing. They should have called this one In Action Hollywood because it drops inputs like Donkey Kong drops barrels. And if that wasn't bad enough, it drops movement inputs the most. It says it's an 8-way joystick, but it only pays attention to the four cardinal ones. So this game has four worlds to play through with ten maps a pop. The four worlds are Temples of Chaos, Excalibur, Transylvania, and Galaxy Wars. Take a quick guess what they are. And boy do they not waste any time kicking your butt. The biggest problem is not the enemy attacking you, it's the hazards that inevitably move faster than you do. And if you die three times, you have to start over again from the beginning of the level. This was 1995, and there's no mid-level respawn? Oddly enough, there are no dip switches for this one either, because those cost money. So no extra lives for me. No extra lives for high points. No music. Yeah, that's right, no music. This game is so obscure that I can't even find pictures of the cabinet or the manual. And if I hadn't played it and seen the database sites to back me up, I'd be questioning its existence. Oh, Battle Shark, come back, I'm sorry. This is so bare bones, Atari 2600 games look complex by comparison. It gets worse, too. The game just seems to drag on and on and on. The problem with that is that the challenge isn't from the difficulty of the game, it's from the near impossibility of getting anything accomplished. That doesn't make for the good kind of hard, it just makes it frustrating. It gets better. In Action Hollywood, you don't just die. You die extra hard. In Temples of Chaos, you turn into a skeleton when killed. In Excalibur, you apparently shrink into nothingness. In Galaxy Wars, you get disintegrated. In Transylvania, you get your throat ripped out. This game is dark. The original Mortal Kombat had just hit arcades around this time, and it clearly had at least a little effect on this particular game. So let's look back quickly at this thing and see if it gets the quarter of approval or the slug of shame. For starters, the lack of music is unforgivable in a game that came out in 1995. The difficulty is also through the roof, but not because it's actually hard. The graphics are pretty enough, and the simple gameplay style makes it easy to learn, but enjoying those 40 levels is something of an exercise in futility because of the control issues. So sadly, this one has got to go. Well, it was a valiant effort for a five-man dev team. If you can't move the characters right, it's not going to be fun. Join us next time when we look at Sega's 1991 Spider-Man game.